you're watching Force 13's Tropical Weather Bulletin with your presenter, Nathan Foy. Hello and welcome, this is Force 13 Live. Hello, my name's Nathan Foy. Oh, I'm here. And I'm also joined by Devon and David at this hour. The current time is 10pm here in the UK, 9pm UTC. Uh, the time on the East Coast is 5 o'clock, is it Devon, or is it later than that? 5.01. Oh, we got it, we got it. Uh, and hi David on the East Coast of Australia, how you doing? Not bad, thank you. Uh... Nathan and uh, the tropical uh, scene uh, shows uh, an interesting scene as usual and uh, developing uh, systems. It is indeed because we have two of them right now, uh, two big uh, significant ones at least, one bigger than the other actually, uh, Typhoon Lion Rock which by our reckoning is already a category 4 typhoon although the officials only say category 3 at this stage though I think Devon would agree that we have good reason to call it a 4 right now looking at its satellite presentation which you can just about see on some of the imagery uh, we'll blow that up in a, a little bit later on the screen share I guess um, and also we've got Tropical Storm Gaston which tried to become a hurricane earlier today but failed and might try again tomorrow, who knows? <laughs> uh, but for the time being, it remains just a tropical storm, 70 miles an hour, according to the NHC, but I think that's going down. All right. And uh, what's just happened in the last few minutes is Tropical Depression 13E has just decided to form in the Eastern Pacific, uh, so that could be our next feature in the East Pack. Um, NHC say it will become a minimal hurricane. Uh, other models say otherwise, as high as Cat 4, according to the HWRF. Who do you believe? We'll try and digest that for you during the show. 9.03, and there's Lion Rock's projected track. Devon. And Lion Rock is probably the most significant concern right now. Um... You can see if I pulled it up on the screen share or not. I have absolutely no idea if anyone can see this. Yes, it's right there. Yep. Excellent. Uh, Typhoon Lion Rock is this kind of small, definitely a small system that's located pretty much to the dead east of Taiwan here. Uh, moving to the southwest. And you can see it's got a tiny eye that isn't necessarily clear, but... It's certainly straddling that Cat 3, Cat 4 border. Depending on who you ask, if you ask us, it's definitely a 4. If you ask the JMA, God knows what you get when you ask them. They actually um, say it is a Cat 3, barely. <laughs> excellent. Um, Lion Rock is probably the most significant threat out of any of the, I don't know, 10 tropical disturbances that are currently active. Now we have some ridiculous number. There's a few. Not as much as last week. Um, though I must say, looking at that wide imagery there, I don't really feel does Lion Rock justice looking at that. No, no, this is this is just wide imagery trying to show the entire West Pacific. Because I also kind of wanted to show this interesting blow up of mm. convection. I don't know if that's supposed to be 14W or whatever. I think it might be. Uh... If it isn't, I don't know what is. <laughs> I, don't know. I know that there's also a TD that just got designated by the JMA. Um, certainly not designated by the ATCF. Um, there's one. I think that location is in the South China Sea, maybe? Oh. Uh, 119 East. I don't know where that would be. Probably to the south of Lion Rock here. I'm not sure. I don't have my bearings in the Western Pacific. Um, and there's also a... 192. It must be. Uh, and there's also a 92W, which I'm almost certain is this thing, or TD14W, whatever it would be. Um, uh, I recently, no. 
Oh, here it is. Here it is designated here, 14W. So, yeah, this mm. that's what this is here. It's 14W. Okay. Um, hold on. Oh, I'm just Devin's trying to bring up. <laughs> yep. I'm just uh, trying to bring up the uh, flight of the 14 W. It's it's just okay. We've got 14 W. Uh, Nathan, I'll, I'll bring that up while uh, yes. Devon's uh, uh, preoccupied for a minute. Okay. Temperature at 413 HQ, 17 Celsius, 62 Fahrenheit. So. On the lower side of things there um, after we've had a few warm days here cooling down if you want to tell us what the weather is at your place you're more than welcome and if you've got any other comments um, do send them in we're live right now um, and uh, if you have any questions for the team we'll do our best to answer in real time now what's this we're looking at um, here yeah I'm just starting just starting to pull models here on is I think that there's something like a 15 minute delay or whatever going on to the stream, so it might take a little while for us to actually get to your comment if you do leave one. 15 minutes? I hope not. Usually it's only 15 seconds. Hopefully it still is. Oh, 15 seconds? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 15 boy. seconds. Yeah, it's not so I bad. Thought it was, I thought it was several minutes. <laughs> no. Uh, not unless you've got a poor internet connection. All right. Um, I know on live streams it's usually around 10-15 minutes. Good Lord. Alright, well, I'm going to go through the GFS uh, run here to see how strong it creates line rock. Uh, something that should be noted is that the GFS does make it a lot stronger here in the next 12 to 18 hours. I don't think that's happening because it's going to be slowing down here mm. and then it's going to double back on itself to the northeast. Which is all good, but it needs to leave its area of colder waters that it's already passed over to get into an area of warmer waters. And you can see the GFS really blowing up the system here. 891 millibars, me. which would translate to 175 miles an hour. And then take it off to the north and east. Does not necessarily affect the Tokyo area, and you can see it really weakening here and basically falling apart at the end of the run. The, the GFS is not expecting any land interaction at this time. There is a model that completely disagrees with that, and that's the ECMWF. Your favorite. Oh, this day. Uh, I have to say, just to yes. quickly mention, um, sea surface temperatures near Lion Rock are amongst the highest in the Westpac, 30, yes. 31 Celsius. Yep. Just looking yep. at that, and I was a bit surprised when I saw hmm. it that, that high. Yeah, and, and Devin, one more thing as well. You, um, well, actually, I'll wait for you to mention what, what you're about to see on the ECMWF before my next comment. Right. Uh, the ECMWF... Uh, disagrees with that uh, thing with the GFS where it keeps Lion Rock offshore. Uh, the ECMWF does predict a landfall and uh, a weaker typhoon than the GFS. The ECMWF only predicting a weaker. probably moderate cap 4 there with that pressure. Only. <laughs> and then uh, it brings it directly into the Tokyo area as a 921 millibar typhoon, which is rather significant and wait till you hear this 26 degrees celsius sea surface temperatures extend to tokyo 28 degree waters are just off the coast of tokyo oh the, the waters are there that doesn't yep that doesn't surprise me especially with the lack of tropical cyclone activity that we've had in the west pack so no surprises there, if you ask me. The, the sea surface and, temperature one degree south of Tokyo is the same as the sea surface temperature just northwest of Palau at 10 degrees north. Oh, good lord. Yeah. Uh, and then the ECMWF takes it across Japan and into uh, the northeastern part of North Korea. Uh, might bring some gusty winds to Vladivostok. Other than that, I really don't think that's going to do much in that area. Um, but the ECMWF definitely predicting a rather significant uh, typhoon affecting Tokyo in five days. Um, I think we're going to have to wait to see how the storm behaves when it cuts back to the northeast before we can say any kind of 
definite landfall or landfall area, but uh, definitely a scary situation there mm. if the ECMWF is correct. Lynn, Devin, you look at the joint type thing, a warning center chart. They have it um, on the 29th at 18 CD. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, wind speed uh, 75 knots, uh, gusting to 90. But they have it on the 26th. Is what well, it's going to come back uh, to the 25th, 18 CD, 105 gusting 130. But then, uh, oh, wait, so they've changed that massively because they were saying 120 miles an hour on five and day five flat uh, the last update. Yeah, and now they're only saying 85 miles per hour at day five. I've never seen anything um, like that. The G the JTWC track definitely mirrors what the uh, GFS is saying, um, with the exception of the intensity. The intensity is probably going to be much stronger than what the JTWC is saying here. Um, I guess I will have to wait for that three to five day period right now where it's accelerating off to the north and east. That's where it's going to gain its most intensity. It's probably going to peak right around the 72 hour mark or somewhere mm. in between the 72 to 96 hour mark that's three to four days probably i think he'll probably peak is somewhere in the high range cap four might peak as a cap five maybe can Certainly we can we officially rule out um lion rock affecting anywhere south and west of okinawa yet i doubt it <laughs> I, I want to rule it out that. because I'm looking I, at one of the tracks. Devon, go. I really don't think that uh, it's going to travel that much further south and west before it starts double backing to the uh, north and east. And it's also a very small system. So yeah, nice. I'm going to say the chances of that are unlikely. Yeah, could we, uh, can we uh, rule out or rule in uh, uh, taking a uh, uh, line rock uh, crossing over the top of uh, Tokyo on a north northwest week of? That's what one model said. Can't. Uh, well, that's, that's basically what the ECMWF is saying right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to call it a definite. As this it's is most cataclysmic out. run yet. Uh, Thirteen in a row, is it? Oh, it's twelve. Twelve model runs in a row where the ECMWF has said that Lion Rock has been is going to be beneath nine hundred and thirty millibars. Now that's I know all the people that are. A, I know all those people that are like, well, one model run isn't a trend. Yes, but this is 12 straight model runs. <laughs> That's a little bit enough to call it a trend. That was terrible English. <laughs> uh, it's more than enough to call it a trend, in my opinion. Oh, yes, and uh, looking at the GEPS track, uh, nice. the only difference is the uh, central pressure. Uh, what did I say? The GFS has uh, the pressure at, uh, I think, 969, uh, and the GEPS uh, has, uh, has it at 979. Yeah, well, the tracking the to the north of Tokyo, but... Uh, the then GPS some GPS just stands for GFS Ensemble Mean, so it's yeah, well, the same model. Well, that makes sense. Any others so, to look at? Uh, what? Any other models? Any other be models? Uh, well, I wanna, I wanna go to the Atlantic here for okay. a second. We'll go to the Atlantic. We'll come back to Line because Rock. We really haven't talked. To, we really haven't talked much about that at this point. Um. Wrong place. Okay, let's pull up an Atlantic wide view where we're going to see um, a loading screen. <laughs> oh, lovely. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to load, I guess I'll run the GFS and ECMWF models here. Um, you'll see here the 999 low. That's right around there. That is Gaston. And then we have 99L. That is over the... Leeward Islands right now. I don't 
think the 99 is not going to amount to much, but oh, the models are definitely in disagreement with me, so I'm probably going to be ousted on that one. <laughs> uh, moving forward here to four days, it has Gaston at 970 millibars, which is a pretty respectable, probably borderline Cat 1 2 right there. And probably a minimal tropical storm coming into uh, Homestead here. Um, and then and the five day period crossing over Florida. And now we get into the more uncertain period where the ACMWF uh, tracks uh, 99 out basically up the western coast of Florida and into the Apalachicola region as a 985 millibar hurricane. That would probably be minimal Cat 1. And then I don't really know what it's having Gaston doing here, but intensifying a bunch here Oof. as it's approaching 40 degrees north. That just doesn't seem too believable. And uh, has possibly an iron coming out of here as well. Mm. Well, we we will we'll see if that is going to happen. That, is that Gaston I, tropical or extra tropical? Is it an early extra tropical transition or a really late one? I would think so. That, that's what logic would tell me there. Um, Faith, anyone? Because <laughs> here it's moving to the northwest and then it doubles back due east mm. and then accelerates off to the north and east. So I would think that it would be uh, transitioning to extra tropical there. Let me just see well, if SST is tropical by that. high at all. Certainly post tropical by that run. Yeah, by but, that. Uh, <laughs> I think it I think it's probably post tropical definitely by here. Oh yes. Probably um, there. SSTs <laughs> extend along its track that you've just shown us there. Twenty six degree SSTs extending only to about 36 north. All right. We'll take a look at what the GFS says. I'm not expecting a huge difference here. Probably only differences will be in EN and 99L. Uh, the GFS does not form 99L. Okay, so GFS is in agreement with me. Well, does it? No, it doesn't look like it. And then... The GFS calls for uh, potentially quick intensification of Gaston here from day 4 to day 5, intensifying from 980 millibars, minimal hurricane, to 955 millibars, which is a borderline Cat 2, Cat 3 in just 24 hours. And just like the CMWF, Start has has it intensifying as it turns off to the north and east there to 942, and intensifies further to wow. 933 as it continues off to the north and east. Now, when was the last time we had a storm of that intensity in that location? Katia, maybe was Katia that strong? No, Alex, maybe. No, I don't even think Alex is that strong. And uh, due to. Uh, her mean not developing out of 99L here, do, uh, according to the GFS, we have mm. uh, her mean oh, yes. uh, coming off as a tropical wave here off of Africa. When's this now? Uh, is this next way week? out in the run. Next way week. out in the run. Yeah. Past 10 days, I think. Next weekend, then. <laughs> yeah. I think so, we need to apply some caution to that uh, particular model when uh, looking at the other ones. For guessing. Because... Uh, could well one, be a, uh, a weak one... TD there off the coast of the US, but uh, nothing yes, more. Yes, I did, I did see that too. I doubt that'll be tropical. One model shows guessing uh, heading towards uh, what, the east case? Not Just Gaston, the north of Florida? Wouldn't be Gaston. The only threat Gaston's for gonna stay, the only threat Gaston's for Gaston's gonna stay Bermuda. well to the east of Bermuda. <laughs> well, I'm not convinced well, it will be all that far east of Bermuda, but it's not likely Bermuda will be affected. But it is a small possibility. Uh, now here's the Navgem model, which is usually in line with the European model, and we can see that with the development here of. 
99L. Oh, I think here's this Gaston. is going to be an interesting one if it's like the one I saw not long ago. Has it changed a bit? Oh, yes, a little bit. Uh, 955 millibars on the MSLP graphics, so that is an interesting strength system. And here we can see yeah. three storms. Yeah. Uh, Gaston, Hermina, and potentially an Ian developing, although that's pretty mm. far north for it, something to be yeah. developing off of Africa. It was one of the previous Navgem runs that I was really curious about. I don't know if you saw it, and I don't know when it was now, but it was in the last 24 hours. Uh, one of the runs called for a significant hurricane in the Gulf, making landfall on the uh, Texas-Louisiana border. Uh, mm. Doesn't look like that I'll one. See if I can, I can, I'll see if I can find one here. Well, what are you looking? Uh, you can't. I'm going to start looking through uh, the model runs here. See if they'll pop. Let's see if they'll. Uh... Pretty recent. But then again, uh, time goes so quickly. It could have been two days ago, for all I know now. But I, I'm pretty sure it was in the last 24 hours. Well, I'm, well, I'm could looking be this for one. it here. Uh, no. Well, there's this. That. Is oh, this the one that you're looking for here? No, that's a different one. <laughs> that's a different one? I think it came after that one, actually, so uh, maybe it's not on there. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't the nap jam. <laughs> maybe it wasn't. Yes, but uh, curiously, right here at the end of the run, three systems here predicted by the nav gem. A powerful Hurricane Gaston, probably a Cat 3... Cat 4 there, maybe even, mm -hmm. considering this is the MSLP graphic. A minimal hurricane into the Appalachic Pola area, again in the in line with the ECMWF. And potentially a TD, strong tropical wave or something coming off of Africa here. That Orlando, location. hello. Hello. Go ahead. Nice of you to join us, Orlando. Uh, any thoughts? So, um, my thoughts on the Line Rock, it's a very interesting storm. Um, it does have the potential to be um, a bit catastrophic for um, Japan in general. And for 99L, it's starting, its convection is starting to decrease. But um, the ECMWF and... Um, GFS still try and form it, but not as strong as they were yesterday. Yes. Um, okay, the next one I'm going to direct to Devon then. Um, Garrett sent a message a few minutes ago saying, I would think 99L would form because it's going to move by sheer grow convection, develop into a strong tropical storm by the time it nears Florida since it has very warm water. So, explain, I assume you're still of the opinion that it won't form at all. Explain why. Um, well, right now, uh, you have 99L, the strong tropical wave here, and I will admit it's a pretty decent one. It wasn't anything three days ago, but now it's finally gotten back a little bit. Um, but skirting along the northern end of the greater Antilles here, not necessarily Puerto Rico, but definitely Hispaniola and Cuba as well, they have, uh, very, very tall mountains on those islands. They extend up over a mile, I believe. And they'll just tear any system apart, especially weak storms. Uh, a couple storms that, that uh, come to my mind, uh, well, one especially is Tropical Storm Emily back in 2011, which was, seemed like it was just going to go across the Central Caribbean and it just got lifted into Hispaniola and it just tore the entire system apart. You couldn't notice anything of it. But some storms have miraculously survived. Hello, everyone. I'm that's, here. That's Hank. Good evening, Hank. Hank, good evening. Live event. Whatever this is. Uh, what do you think of the current uh, tropical situation there? Uh, frankly, I'm kind of concerned, actually. Especially um, when it comes to 99L, because I've been seeing you know, what the Euro and the CMC have been saying about the storm. Euro wants to take it, last I saw, uh, up towards the Texas Louisiana border, uh, just east of where Rita made landfall. And um, CMC, I believe, took it closer to Pensacola. But either way, uh, 
hurricane landfall either way. So, hurricane landfall in the Gulf, definitely not good news. Uh, Lion Rock, yeah, that thing looks pretty impressive. Uh, I would not be surprised if we see a uh, Cat 5 pretty soon. Potentially. I am back. Yeah, uh, what, what is everyone's thoughts on whether Lion Rock will get to Cat 5? Possible. Already expressed mine. Sorry? Devin? Already expressed mine. Yes. Looks like the eye is starting to cloud over a little bit, but, you know, looking very impressive. Could go either way. <laughs> The, the stalling isn't going to help though, it's already moving pretty slowly, um, not sure how fast exactly, but it was 5 miles an hour a few hours ago, and I'd say it's probably about the same, if not just slightly less. So, uh, yeah, this source says 3 miles an hour three. southwest. Okay. That would also make sense. Um, JTWC says 7. Oh. Interesting. I can't even agree on movement now. <laughs> Never mind strength. Um, okay, well, there's Lion Rock and Gaston on the left-hand side of your screen, just to remind you that they're there. Um, and uh, what are we going to move on to next? Should we take a look at uh, the shear map for the Atlantic, perhaps? Yeah, I can get those up. <laughs> oh, oh, Rick, I'm, I apologize, is. I just got back from school. <laughs> to oh, check the latest okay. conditions over there. Um, Ram Turtle has made an awful joke, um, and the lazy kid says, I might be closing because of an eye war replacement. Any inkling of that from Lion Rock? Mm, I don't know. I'll have to take a look at Microwave to see that. Okay, here's the wind shear first. Nope. Wind shear I kind of doubt it, but, you know, it's always a possibility. As you can see, the area that where model some models develop 99L here over the Bahamas, there's no wind shear there, and it's mm. not uh, increasing either. Meanwhile, so, Gaston might have some trouble ahead. What? Yes. The National Hurricane Center, I don't know if they've changed their forecast at all, but last time I saw, they predicted it would weaken only to about 60 miles an hour. Looking at that... I, I'm not sure whether it will survive at all. Yes. Uh, one, uh, some things I do have to say is that it seems like it's starting to weaken here on the eastern side. Uh, Good point, will yeah. definitely be an issue until it probably gets to about day four, in which case this has moved east, this has moved northeast, and this has moved sufficiently west so that Gaston would eventually get into this sheer pocket here um, and that lack of shear will probably allow it to strengthen near uh, Bermuda. I don't see how the models are strengthening it further to 930 millibars but mm. Also to point out the low level center of 99L is over a pocket of shear right now but it should move towards the west northwest and get out of that shear as it approaches the Bahamas and the mid-level center of 99L is closer down towards the south, uh, just to the west of the Lesser Antilles, but that is kind of becoming irrelevant at this point. Yeah, I think I should point out that there is uh, no low-level circulation, otherwise it would be a TD. <laughs> yes, uh, Graphic, a TS, I saw actually, that looked like probably. Po possibly some, some circulation, but like some circulation. I'll say entire, like, I can. I'll pull up vorticity. Uh, see, let's see here. It is a circulation. Ninety-nine L is one circulation away from being a TS because uh, there were TS winds reported, were there not? Yep, that would probably be reported at around forty-five miles an hour. To looking at recon. Uh, moving on to the East Pacific because I know that there's a new tropical depression there, and I think there's supposed to be another one forming. Um. Neither of them, I don't think, are expected to affect Mexico, so not exactly the highest priority of things right now. Yeah. I know A just dissipated over waters that were nothing, but uh, taking a look at the shear graphic and the typical uh, East I should say the lack of shear here. 
So you think, think we could really see two significant systems out of these? We've already got one becoming a TD and forecasting a hurricane. Uh, I, we might see twin hurricanes here. We might. I really haven't seen the models for these packs, so I can't really form a great opinion. But looking at the wind shear map, it a possibility. I believe for TD13, they're saying anywhere between a Cat 1 and even a Cat 4. Uh, so, oh. you never know. Could be a 5. 2010 had one. Let's not go yes. there. I think maybe the best possibility for this storm is a 3. I don't think it'll get up to a 4. I don't think it's going to rob a Blas. It's, I just think it's going to stay at a 3. Now, look at this messy situation here in the West Pack. Yeah, it was even it was even worse last week. It was real bad last week. So um, why is wind shear so high down there near the Philippines and over the big hotbed of activity that we saw last year? I I know there's a I know that there's a trough kind of down here near the equator causing some thunderstorms down here, and that's probably causing a bunch of shear. Uh, and then you have the this system itself, which is currently frontal, and that's going to cause shear. Any front will cause shear. Uh, and now you'll see here with Lion Rock, now if it started moving to the northeast right now, it would be a very bad day. Um, yeah. Since shear is pretty high up there. But this is supposed to be kicked off uh, to the north and east. As this system starts getting driven by this frontal boundary that will eventually be kicking in. And depending on how low this south, this, uh, how south this low gets, not how low this south gets, um, <laughs> will depend, will tell Lion Rock whether if it will stay out to sea like the GFS, uh, curve and hit the northern tip of Honshu like the Navgem says, CMC or curve well. and hit near the uh, Tokyo region, like the ECMWF. So, definitely a complex situation setting up here with Lion Rock, but a situation that will definitely favor strengthening in the next few days. So, are you ruling out a landfall on the western part of Japan? Over Kyushu, um, western like Honshu? Like, to the west of Tokyo? Well, yeah, way to the west, yes. Yeah, I I know that mo that uh, some models have uh, been hitting it in around the Kyoto area, but uh, that seems to uh, have been ruled out. I don't think we're going to see uh, now. Taking a look at the models, I don't think that we're going to see a landfall to the. I would rule out any landfall to the west of the Mie. Prefecture. I have no idea how to pronounce that. M I E. <laughs> Don't know how to pronounce that. But the you than me. The Mai Prefecture. I doubt that anyone is going to make it to the west of that. Um, west of Tokyo can probably still happen, but I would rule out anything to the west of me. I've just got me. some uh, news coming out of. Um, where are we here? Indiana, I believe. Tornado warnings are in effect. There's been a confirmed large tornado um, over uh -huh. Woodburn or nine miles northeast of New Haven. I have no sure. idea where that is, uh, but if you do, then uh, take cover. I think that New Haven is in s northern Indiana or southern Indiana. Uh, no there are than four tornado warnings right now in Indiana, one north of Indianapolis. At least. I see five, actually. The, this might be a double warning up here. So, One uh, issue is on just to, to just to mention the latest there uh, out of the U.S. tornado warnings. It looks like one just east of Indianapolis and one just to the north. Also, one near the. Uh, Near the Keystone yeah. area, leaving that and moving closer towards Lynn Grove and uh, Chattanooga, which is just across the border into Ohio. And the north of Cutler, but moving towards Clay and Kokomo. Here, here it is, right here. Uh, the warning for the 
Thing that Nathan just said, a damaging tornado has been confirmed. A tornado warning is issued for southwestern Adams County and southeastern Wells County in northeast Indiana. Uh, a confirmed tornado was located near Mount Pelier, or nine miles to the south of Bluffton, Indiana, moving east at 25 miles per hour. And the tornado is expected to be near Bern and Geneva, Indiana at around 555 and around Monroe at around 6 and other locations expected to be impacted by this tornadic thunderstorm include Dillman, Keystone, Reefsburg, Nottingham, Veracruz, Lynn Grove, Petroleum, uh, Poneto, uh, Ceylon, and Domestic, Indiana. I doubt I pronounced all those correctly, but... <laughs> um, Oh, that's not good. God, just some seconds. But uh, yeah, there's the. Okay, do you mind if I steal screen share? Of course, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Seven, like <laughs> just not looking at the euro, uh, because I haven't looked at it all day. Because you know, I have more important things right now. Uh. Well, we'll Looks like the storm viewers. is going to hit extreme southern Florida and then move right up the Gulf Coast. And that looks like a possible hurricane just to the west of Tampa. That is obviously not good news. And then moving up close to made, making landfall, close to where Holland and maybe just a little bit further west. And uh, Orlando is actually in that area right now. So if that scenario comes to proof, then, you know, then he could... You know, film the storm and do something with it. Also, predicting uh, Gaston to become 937 millibars. I highly doubt that's going to happen due to issues we discussed earlier. And uh, just like we'll have another storm that could be Ian uh, moving. Looks it'll move due west from Cape Birds, and if it keeps that track, which I don't think it will, because of a ridge to the north and. It could, it could move towards the Caribbean. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, anything on the horizon? Well, of course we've got those invests, but uh, anything significant on the horizon in the West Pack after Lion Rock, by any chance? I don't see it. I don't see anything. Uh, David, are you still with us? I'm still here, and... Any news um, over thanks. at your neck of the woods? Uh, I don't even have a chance to have a look at it. I'm just <laughs> quickly bringing it up. I've been focusing on the uh, Atlantic and the Westpac area. Right. Okay, what have we got? Uh, Nathan, BBC News is saying uh, Britain uh, is... Uh, are likely to uh, have a toxic uh, cloud moving over it. Oh, the joys. Yes, uh, that's just uh, popped up on the uh, on their Twitter feed. Okay, for New South Wales, we've got a... Uh, they've cancelled uh, about three hours ago their uh, severe weather warning. Uh, we've got a couple of... Uh, East Coast lows. Uh, a strong wind warning is current for the entire Sydney Coast waters, so the Byron Coast, so coming up the uh, northern uh, New South Wales border towards, sorry, northern uh, coastal region of New South Wales up towards the Queensland border. Uh, the strong wind warning. Uh, to the south of uh, Sydney and they have uh, some uh, flood mm -hmm. warnings for some of these uh, weather systems okay uh, Queens so Queensland uh, not much going on uh, Victoria and uh, I've got a couple of uh, flood warnings for local with the systems 
We'll come back to that in a moment, David. Just yep. a, a few comments. Um, some of them have already been replied to, but uh, uh, Devon and um, Hank, I think you replied to one of them. Um, Kay Clement says, I live in southeast Louisiana. Do we have to worry? And oh. my response was, be on alert, but location, but landfall location, if there is one, is still uncertain. Uh, so far, it's been back and forth with the Euro. Uh, we had landfall location yesterday in Alabama, this morning in near the Sabine River, and now close to where Colin made landfall. So it's been all over the place. So I just be on know. alert. But as always, just get just. Be prepared for the hurricane season. Yep. No matter what the storm does, just be prepared. And, and Garrett yeah. asks, how strong do you think 99L is? Um, nothing. <laughs> nothing. It says the observations, <laughs> it's, it's a, of course. It, it, being, uh, recon limited. went through and found uh, pockets of 40 and 45 mile per hour sustained winds on the ground, but it's a 40 to 45 mile per hour nothing. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not. It's not a tropical storm or a tropical depression. There's no low level circulation associated with it. Um, in fact, it's not even certain that 99L is going to form in the first place. Uh, it, I know the ECMWF and the NavGem form it, which is a big plus usually, but it's got to get a away from the greater Antilles if it's going to develop at all, and I don't think it's going to happen. It could. I'm not going to rule it out, but I don't think that it's uh, very likely for 99L to hold together over Hispaniola and Cuba. Hmm. Well, isn't it supposed to move to the north of there? I don't think it's really going to even affect Cuba all that much. Uh, could do. Um, did one model say, well, one of the models has said at one point that it would pass sort of between Florida and Cuba. Um, I'm not sure how likely that is. <laughs> Hello. Good evening. John's Good evening. Arrived. That's the sound of John Courier. How are you this evening? I am fine. I just got back from a freshman orientation for school because I'm going to promote for clubs and things like that. Just uh, give me a minute to get my camera set up and I'll be able to say things. Because you can't say a, th a thing without a camera. Very true. Currently my computer is down at the moment, so um, I have no computer Skype, so I'm on my phone for a little bit. Okay. Um, but... But on I the can get right things. now is an image from one hour ago of Typhoon Lion Rock. Mm. Oh, it's strengthened a bit. A bit. Yes, it's strengthened quite a lot. Weakened over the past hour or two. Um, mm. And interestingly, over the Daito Islands of Japan, um, under Gale Advisories, nothing more than that, and. They never have had anything more than Gale Advisories, the closest land area to the storm. You can't really see it on there, but it's sort of just inside the storm's influence, north northeast of north northwest of the center. These things are kind of dead, so I'm just using it so I can fool my computer. The way it's moving is probably almost due north now. Okay. Um. Okay. My yes. mic is not working, yes, so it I'm is. gonna have to deal with that. Wait, well the other one is. The other one is. The oh other my God, one. This one works. Well, keep it on that <laughs> one, would you? Till we get a break right. in 15 minutes, hey. Um, so you're looking at Lion Rock and Gaston. Lion Rock officially still only a Category Three, but I believe it's up to 125 now, according to JTWC. Is it? Yeah. Uh, we still think it's a Category 4. Latest SatOps says it's 143, as you can see on here. So let's um, <coughs> talk through what our track is showing right now. Stalling out, as it is already, over the next 48 hours, and then starting to launch itself towards the northeast into Day 3, 
day four uh, is where we expect, well, day three we expect the peak and then it begins to weaken into day four and five. But sea surface temperatures, as we said before, very warm all the way to Japan, which means we could see a typhoon landfall and a significant typhoon landfall for somewhere along the southern coast of Japan or even along the eastern coast of something a little bit weaker. Um, or uh, the best case scenario for Japan is uh, which model said that it would move out to sea there? Was it the uh, GFS? GFS predicts it to move out to sea. Uh, Navjam, Northern Honshu, ECMWF uh, into Tokyo. Mm. And Rave Hyde is th currently uh, 31 feet to Lion Rock. <laughs> Just checking some of the latest model runs. Uh, for Gaston, uh, the HWRF thinks it will get to 110 miles an hour on day four. Uh, um, though also says it will hover around hurricane status until day three. Um, then you've got some other models. The GFDL thinks that Gaston will get to... Um, just about scraping category 2 status on day 5 um, after being a category 1 for quite some time before that day 3 to 5 count 1 um, and no models really foresee the storm weakening Devon um, the decay ships is the most pessimistic and it says that it will go no lower than 58 knots and it's at 60 now <laughs> That's Already interesting. Did. We'll we'll have to see how the shear affects it. Right now, it's not looking good. I admit. Okay, is this um, working? But a little bit I am better? saying that shear is decreasing on the eastern front of it, We've got and uh, I think that it's probably going to continue decreasing. But how quickly it decreases is obviously a matter of fact of how uh, much the storm weakens. It's a weird and, one. Uh, it will definitely halt intensification at the very least. Well, actually, the um, HWRF also does a forecast for wind shear, so I'm going to have a little look at this and see what it actually sees. And I must say, Gaston pummels right into that wind shear. The wind shear itself pushes off towards the north, but Gaston's embedded in it. I can't see its strength, uh, keeping its strength. Uh oh. So I, I'm at a loss <laughs> when it comes to that. Yes. As for Invis 99L, um, GFDL and HWRF models that you'd expect to be. Usually they're very optimistic about these things. They're not. Uh, HWRF thinks that nothing will come of it at all. And the GFDL thinks that it will... Well, the GFDL thinks it's nearly at its peak right now. Well, then that means that three models now agree with me. Uh, the ship's model, however, for those who want a hurricane, predicts a Cat 1. <laughs> of course it does. Good old ship's model. Yes, the same model that said that yesterday that there was a basically even odds of Gaston becoming a Category 3 at this point in time. <laughs> Good lord. Oh my yeah. goodness. Crazy. Well, um, what else haven't we looked at today? Don't look at me, rather. But that's being cheeky, and we're not trying to be cheeky on live air. What are you talking um, about, John? I said, well, you haven't looked at me today, but then again, I'm trying to be cheeky, which is coming right. off bad. Um, regardless, um, I think that my computer needs to stop doing some crazy things on air. And um, did Gaston strengthen at all to 80, 75 at all? Or is oh, it still no. No, no. It's, it's a shy Gaston. It doesn't want to be a hurricane just yet. Well, regardless, you might as well take a look at what the models say, so let me pull those up. I did just say, yes. Um, well, some of the models said. Uh, I didn't 
mention the GFS or the ECMWF, but we did cover that earlier on in the show. Well, it's always worth a repeat, I'm guessing. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, now what's okay. this? Well, it was uh, Lion Rock on the Dvorak imagery. We'll come back to that, I guess. In the meantime, uh, I'm guessing this is John. Yep, it's me. Yep. Uh, You're watching um, John on a computer, live. So much John, so little time. All right, let's get to this. Here's the GFS. I think it should be said that uh, Simis uh, says that Lion Rock is not even a Cat 3. Ooh. Wow. That's lot. poor. That is very poor. Not all the frames are out in that one yet. A little earlier run. That's too early. So, uh, yeah, a storm with an eye is not even a cat three. GFS okay. kind of saying the same thing here. Ooh, deepening right there. Okay. And weak disturbance off Florida. Um. That would be ninety nine oh. And we have this. We have Nether Hermine. What's after Hermine? Ian. Ian. We have Ian just going out to sea. Another thing coming off the coast of Africa, so. Just I guess that Gulf Coast system is really not coming together. Just something interesting to note, uh, by the way. Um, the National Weather Service also um, has gale warnings in effect for the waters around the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands because of, you know what, 99L. Seems a bit premature to me, don't you think? There's the ECMWF, which is our favorite model. Well, some of our favorite models. ECMWF still stubborn on a, looks like a Category 1 or 2 into Florida, and Gaston deepening like hell as soon as it yep. gets over yep. by Bermuda. Um, another another Cape Bird system, two Cape Bird systems coming off. We, we possibly could have. That's long um, range. You think that this is still tropical at this point? Probably not. No, uh, that's pro. You have one, two, three systems active in the Atlantic, according to ECMWF, at 240 hours. We should do a, a poll on the uh, on the stream. What is everyone's Good. favorite model? It's time to go to Crazy Land, folks. Crazy land. Here's the CMC, most people's favorite model. Um, <laughs> CMC develops gas and again, restrengthens it, and then not very much, actually. CMC is actually not being very aggressive. Oh, that's a very small hurricane right it's there. Tiny. It's like Tracy size. Um, Gaston deepening over there, and a Tracy landfall in the body of Florida Panhandle, Mississippi. Alabama panhandle, and then bye-bye, whatever it is, you know, a little Gulf Coast area of Alabama, and Gaston just goes out the sea, not very strong, and the CMC saying East Pack activity, and oh, maybe yes. a, a wave coming off the coast here, closed ISO bar right there, um, about it, really, unless you want me to go to the JMA, see what the JMA thinks. I think we're good. Um, I'd like to see more imagery, so let's go back to Devon, um, if we may, and uh, what he was screen sharing just before John showed those models, um, if he's still got it up there. Or Hyper whatever. World! <laughs> Crazy Land! Not today. Um, Not today. Devon, I think I can pull it up. Or Hank, someone. Whoever's there. Uh, someone had the um, animation of the Dvorak imagery of, um, of Lion Rock up just a few moments ago. I'd like to see that again. And and uh, the various other imageries as well. Now uh, there's the visible. Visible is just about arriving there actually. So we'll get some visible images of uh, Line Rock before we finish tonight. Yeah, I'm just going to open up these three. So the imagery just there's about. The visible. Yeah, just about arriving. Day breaking over Typhoon Line Rock. Um, just the gale advisory for the Daito Islands of Japan, and you can see them on that on that map there. Those tiny islands to the north of the storm's influence, 
um, under a gale advisory and they had much worse conditions I would expect a little bit earlier when it was intensifying. The rest of the islands under no real threat it would seem at this stage but that could change depending on what happens though we aren't expecting that that part of Japan will see the worst from this storm it's going to be much later on but anyway looking at Lion Rock itself it's been trying to get that grey area banding all the way round and on one or two frames it managed it but not quite Devon. Ooh. I don't think Devin's here. It doesn't seem like he can talk to us. He might not be able to talk. Um, but, uh, well, not too far away from becoming a significant storm, Super Typhoon, not yet. But uh, Lion Rock trying its best, and maybe it will succeed sooner or later. It's got a plenty of time, and it's certainly got really, really warm sea surface temperatures amongst the warmest in the West Pacific is what the storm is tracking over right now 30 to 31 celsius waters um but that will decrease the longer lion rock lingers um i'm looking at a uh, lion rock right now and it's a very compact system i think that's been the case for the majority of its life now um, what could have caused it to be so compact rather well, actually on this imagery right here you can see how the banding around the eye pretty well. It always was compact though, wasn't it? So yeah. It's just how they start, isn't it? Well, it isn't tip size. It isn't tip size, no. Well spotted. Oh wait, it's on the soul screen, sure. We're going to take a short break. We're going to be back at the, end, at the start of the next hour to talk more about Gaston and Lion Rock and the tornado situation over in Indiana. Stay tuned, this is Force 13 Live, back soon. Force13's live streaming service.
You're watching Force 13's Tropical Weather Bulletin with your presenter, Nathan Foy. Hello, welcome back. This is Force 13 Live. My name is Nathan Foy. Hello, nice to see you again. And uh, hour two of our live coverage of um, Tropical Storm Gaston and Typhoon Lion Rock. Uh, this is going to be our final planned hour tonight. Um, I don't foresee us having to go on any longer than this for the time being. Uh, so if you do have any questions during this hour, please let us know. Joining me is the Skype team consisting of Several people, John, Hank, Devon, David, and I'm not sure if Orlando's still there or not, but he was there earlier, and he might pop back in later if he's not there right now. And my camera's green for some reason. And John's camera is greeny-yellow. Uh, and what you can see in front of you right now uh, is the rapid scan imagery, the wonderful Himawari satellite, showing there day breaking okay. over what is, well... Some people might call it a Category 2, some a Cat 3, some a Cat 4. Lion Rock, whatever its intensity, a significant typhoon and a significant long-range long threat to Japan. Who wants to begin? I'll go. This go is on. literally the least prepared I have been for a live stream in years. Well, let Hank go first, then. All right. I'm going to call things or the hyper world. My technology is not the best, so if I have some trouble pulling some, some things up, I apologize. Uh, so I'm going to start off in the Atlantic because we haven't discussed that yet in this hour. Uh, we have two systems active. We have Tropical Storm Gaston, which is a 70 mile an hour tropical storm. So on the verge of hurricane intensity, probably won't get there for a while as the National Hurricane Center isn't predicting it to become a hurricane until Saturday. Oh, that wasn't insane. initially the case, but due to strong fear. Uh, it is now forecast that this system, once we get into uh, the weekend, will start to intensify, possibly to a Cat 2 by the time we get to Monday. Uh, so that's Gaston, not really threatening any land areas, uh, should stay east of Bermuda. The one that should that is threatening land areas is 99L, which has a lot of text. Uh, <laughs> apologize. And wall of text advisory from the NHC. <laughs> And it's moving off towards the west northwest, towards the Bahamas. Supposed to skirt. It might make the. It might make a landfall over. Uh, in fact, and should make a landfall over Puerto Rico. Skirt the north coast of Hispaniola, and then should form. Could form. Could form, into a tropical storm or a tropical depression in the Bahamas. And then, and then after that, it's been really going two ways. There, and there's some models saying it's going to move east of Florida and move out to sea and move between Hatteras and Bermuda. Some models, uh, actually most of them now, last I recall, uh, make the storm have a landfall near the Miami area or through the Keys, move into the Gulf, and then make landfall somewhere on the United States coast. Uh, ECMWF uh, predicted an Alabama landfall yesterday, predicted a landfall near Sabine River, the Texas-Louisiana border this morning, and is now saying a landfall near uh, the Panama City area to the east of that, similar to where Colin made landfall uh, back in June. And uh, could be a tropical storm, could be a Category 3. That's, I believe, yesterday, yesterday's run run at a Category 3. I don't think that's going to happen. I think we'll probably have a Cat 1 uh, at best. Now, this is very uncertain at this time, so don't, so don't panic just yet because... This is a long way out, and replied to somebody earlier saying, is it going to hit, you know, somewhere along the coast? I don't remember. I said, just be prepared anyways. Even if the system doesn't affect your area, then there might be a system later on down the season that could affect your area. So just stay aware at all times. Monitor the system closely. And yep. if it doesn't move towards our area, then, well, that's good news. Uh, so that's what's going on in the Atlantic. The Eastern Pacific, we have a new tropical depression, mm -hmm. 13E. Uh, this is likely to become a storm tonight. If it becomes a storm, it will be, it will be given the name Lester. And should become a hurricane also by this weekend. 
uh, though forecast to only peak as a one. I think Gaston was supposed to peak as a two. We also have another invest. Uh, this one has a 40% chance of development in the next two days and 80% within five days. And by the way, I forgot to mention this. 99L is 60% 48 hours. Yep. Uh, 80% five days. So that's all for me. I'm going to pass it off to somebody else now. Yeah, I to just want to mention some more immediate uh, issues right now as we go back to the line rock graphic. Uh, we're not talking about that just yet. Uh, but tornado warnings. Uh, there are tornadoes confirmed on the ground, and there are tornado warnings in effect for parts of Indiana and for Ohio. Um, I'll read them out now. Tornado warning in effect until 6.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time for East Central Adams and Southwestern Van Wert counties. Um, a confirmed tornado was located near Monroe or near Bern, moving northeast at 30 miles per hour. Uh, a tornado warning also for northern Howard County in central Indiana. Uh, that's until 6.30. Uh, a tornado warning in effect until 6.15, so going to expire soon in southeastern Cass County. A confirmed tornado was located at 5.59, which was just a few minutes ago, eight miles southwest of Grissom AFB. Um, and any more? Uh, yes, tornado warning for Defiance County in northwestern Ohio, northwestern Paulding County, and northwestern Henry County also. That's until 6.30 because... A confirmed tornado was located four miles southwest of Cecil, uh, moving northeast at 30 miles per hour. That was just a few minutes ago once more. Um, and National Weather Service in Wilmington has issued a tornado warning for northwestern Mercer County in west central Ohio uh, because another confirmed tornado near Burn moving northeast at 35 miles an hour 10 minutes ago. Uh, and one more tornado warning for northwestern Howard County till 6.15. Did I mention that one already? I'm not sure. Um, and southeastern Hancock, West Central Russia, northern Shelby counties um, in Indiana. I don't know if you double mentioned. I don't know if you double mentioned. All these uh, warnings have confirmed tornadoes along with them. Oh, and this God. is central. This is central time. So if anyone is confused, yes. no eastern. Eastern. Oh God. What no, is this? It's like all this? eastern time. Is, is this like the Indiana tornado outbreak? Oh dear. Yeah, it would seem so. Yeah, uh, these oh my are goodness. All, these are definitely all uh, spotted confirmed tornadoes. So these, these aren't just radar indicated. Uh, looking through these, these are either law enforcement or weather spotter confirmed tornadoes on the ground so this is definitely a mm -hmm. situation that a cannot be ignored and b is absolutely happening without a shadow of a doubt yep and that is time, the, my bad. if just you some, are underneath the yeah. tornado warning right now in either indiana or ohio take shelter now there are confirmed tornadoes with these storms get to a lower level area in your home preferably an interior room like a bathroom something with no windows in it or a closet is also excellent um if you have a designated storm shelter go to that regardless of where it is um but just stay low stay indoors don't try to open up any windows in your house just take cover yeah and as we look at it on the radar there, just to note that tornado watches are in effect for <clears throat> large parts of um, of Indiana and northwestern yes. Ohio. And also uh, severe thunderstorm watches in effect for northwestern Missouri and for parts of eastern Kansas dipping into the central part of Oklahoma as well. So that's the situation over in the U.S., um, along with the broader image uh, from the tropics. And, of course, we cover all bases here. Um, anything that is newsworthy when we're on air, we do discuss it. And uh, we'll keep you on top of the tornado situation as well as the tropical cyclone situation. We probably <laughs> might veer more towards the tornadoes this hour because that is immediate and the storms aren't. 
Um, but <clears throat> right now, there's the imagery. Day breaking over Line Rock, which is an unknown strength storm. <laughs> no one really knows well, how I'll strong it is. A lot of question marks. What does Force 13 Sadox say? Well, Sadox did say 143 miles an hour last check. It might have gone down since then. We'll be conducting another check in just a few minutes. Um, Someone all right, to talk chair. about this, there are two, there are two watches in concern right now. Uh, the first one is Tornado Watch 454 that is currently over Indiana and Ohio that has the most immediate uh, tornado threat. This watch is in effect until 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, spotter confirmed tornadoes are in this, so definitely a significant threat. Um, so, just letting you guys know that for most of central Indiana and northwestern and extreme western Ohio, you are underneath a tornado watch. There is also a much larger severe thunderstorm watch that uh, extends across southeastern Kansas. Uh, extreme western uh, Missouri, including Kansas City, and extending further back into northern Oklahoma as well. But the majority of this watch is in Kansas, including the uh, Topeka and Wichita areas. The tornado threat is low, but the hail and severe wind threat is definitely high. Uh, scattered damaging wind gusts up to 70 miles an hour possible and isolated large hail events up to 1.5 inches in diameter is also possible this is in effect until uh 11 o'clock central time and those are the only two watches currently out david and nathan uh, just uh following uh the uh, Twitter platform, uh, breaking news out of Italy, the uh, death toll from the major crake is now 159 and search uh, for survivors uh, continues. Oh, so that's the latest on the earthquake, it's now 159. So lots of things going on at this moment in time. Um, ah, so much! And... Uh, just to mention, the SATOPS has updated and the strength of Line Rock has determined to have gone down slightly from 143 to 140. Oh, a very strong system. Now, um... So the, eye looks like it's, the eye looks like it's a bit obscured. Yeah, it does on the visible imagery. Uh, some new people may have joined us in the uh, in this hour. So, um... I don't know who might want to go first and talk about what they foresee uh, in the future for 99L. I already spoke, so someone else did it. Well, let's start with the more interesting forecast, because you're not going to get much out of me. <laughs> hey. It's wonder we're All getting right. anything out of you. <laughs> All right, then I'm going to have to steal the screen share then. L. Um, currently a mess of convection in the upper northern Caribbean right now. I don't even know where the hell this thing's circulation center is. <laughs> it's a mess. Circulation center? I don't think there is one. I think there's at least two separate entities here. One that is currently... That, that may well be true uh, now. It, it could be becoming true. There is no center, though. <laughs> if there was, it'd be a tropical storm. <laughs> Oh, ha, 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 you ha, ha, ha. It's not a joke. Well, Recon I don't think the got wind, tropical think storm the wind, force winds. They did? Okay, then that, then I um, proved myself wrong again. That's, uh, that's a normal thing that happens here at Force 13. I am wrong about 50% of the time, which makes me hardly reliable. Regardless, um, it looks like we do here have um, a couple... It looks like... We have some okay. sort of circulation trying to develop there. 
Okay. And we have some sort of circulation trying to develop down there. Well, I've just, received, not... I've just received a more direct question from Alberta Plays Minecraft, who says, Force 13, is Invest 99L hitting Florida a true fact? Uh, no. Not at this point in time. No. <laughs> I'm, I, I, think there's, I think there is just two separate mid-level circulations here, it looks like. Two separate ones. One over Hispaniola, and one is currently trekking through the Western Caribbean. That's what I'm looking how I'm looking at it. That's what the imagery itself is telling me. Um, I can't really tell for 100% sure. Um, I need to take a look at the wind map. Um, so, that's anything that exists, thankfully. Now, while you're waiting, I'm going mm. to um, go take a look at Gaston in water in terms of a relative humidity. Okay. And <laughs> All right, well, uh, I'm not going to draw air towards the southwest. <laughs> why is it always going to that window? I don't know what's up with that. Oh, my full screen is being shown. That's why. Um, show this window instead. Yes, um, Is that Gaston, do you say? Looks like it. That is, that is a Gaston. Struggling. Yeah. Definitely. It looks like um, Danny when it began popping into that wind shear. Yeah, kind of. It's not going to do with Danny, though, is it? <laughs> I don't think it is. It's not that small. It's actually a pretty sizable system for its location. Danny um, was in a location where it's difficult to compare, but it was really small. Here's your um, wind map here. Um, zoom in a little bit. <laughs> Is my cursor showing? Is it being cursed again? I think it's not being cursed. But um, regardless, um, let's pull up my tool again. You see Gaston over here. This is Gaston. Mm -hmm. Right here. This is Gaston. Excuse my horrible drawing. And then over here we have, looks like your typical wave set up here. So what we have here is not a TD. We have a tropical wave according to the Earth map here. It's open low. So if anything, all the circulations we're seeing invisible are mid-level or upper-level circulations. But on the surface, all we're getting is a um, typical perpendicular wave. That's all we're getting here. <laughs> it would seem so. Well, uh, there you can just about make out the... Is that the TD over there in the East Pack as well? Yes, here it is, right over here. Mm -hmm. The new tropical depression, 13E. Uh, I've not seen any imagery of that. Does it look like a TS, perchance? Oh, well, let's take a look at let's it. Let's take a look. I've not seen it yet. My computer would cooperate. That can be an issue. Huh. And that's Gaston again, and here's 13E, what visible imagery you want to see. Ooh, it doesn't look like visible. a storm yet. <laughs> it looks interesting. Here is your typical yeah, visible imagery. interesting is not always good, however. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, well, getting close to being a TS, but not quite. Not there yet. I mean, a lot of it's, it looks like a lot of it's exposed. Um, take a look at the water vapor to confirm that. Dry air an issue at all? Um, uh, just off to the I northwest there. Oh, it looks much less good there. <laughs> oh, very disorganized. Looks you. quite horrible on that imagery. Here's your rainbow imagery. Let me turn on not just your SSTs, but we should have yeah, our it's IR the, temperatures. It's the infrared that makes it look bad. The visible quite often can be deceiving. Doesn't look so great there. Um, we are popping about 50, 60 degree cloud tops here, it looks like. Well, any, any invest can do that. <laughs> any TD can do that for, for rather much. Anything can do that in the tropics. Gaston just looks better on, uh, Gaston looks like, uh, crap sure. on visible. It looks really good on, uh, um, would work. But here's, um, here is the IR floater for Gaston. You wanna, and yes, you can see that um, I am running two computers right now, which is 
dismal. <laughs> my excuse sits my headset has broken on me for the third time. We can tell that you're so pleased about that. Um, Indiana and Ohio look a mess right now. Tornado warnings all over the place. There we go. Um, sitting over 27 degree water, so um, your water temperature isn't much of a concern. And I just had the screen share stolen from under me, which kind of pissed me off a little bit. At 6.18 Eastern Time, a confirmed tornado was located near Peru, moving east at 25 miles an hour. That's in central, a tornado warning for central Miami and west central Wabash counties. Uh, so another confirmed tornado from weather spotters. Um, and at 6.16, five minutes ago, a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado was located near Defiance, moving northeast at 35 miles per hour. Tornado warnings in, the, in that area. The tornado will be near Defiance at around 6.25. That's in four minutes. Um, also, um, at 6.15, six minutes ago, a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado located near Monroe, or near Decatur, moving northeast at 30 miles an hour, particularly dangerous situation. Um, it's all going on there at the moment. Southern Miami County in Indiana, tornado warning, um, and several others that I mentioned earlier, so uh, do monitor the local situation if you're living in um, central and eastern um, Indiana into western and northwestern Ohio. Uh, a dangerous um, situation unfolding there this evening. Yes, very true. Um, according to the um, floater I'm looking at... Uh, we were looking at one. What is that now? That is Lion Rock. That is Lion Rock. Um, but I was waiting for the longest time to speak. Um, here we go here. We can see here, um, Gaston is popping 70 degree cloud tops, it looks like. But, you know, that's typical for where it is. And it looks 70 like degree cloud tops, you mean? Yeah, 70. Um, negative 70. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, regardless, it looks like, um, it really looks like that the eastern, sorry, western side of the system has begun to degrade, more or less. There doesn't seem to be a western side of the system anymore. Looks like the center. It's just the center. Maybe it's the uh, dry air is trying to really get in. No, I don't, uh, I'm not sure it is. John, dry. I think it's wind shear. Wind John, shear. I'd like to uh, butt in here. Is uh, we've got some more breaking news here. At least it's just breaking to me now. I've just found this out that we have. Uh, two particularly dangerous situation uh, tornado warnings going on here in uh, northern Indiana. The uh, first one is a particularly dangerous situation for a tornado warning for northeastern Defiance and northwestern Henry counties. A confirmed large and dangerous tornado was located near Defiance and moving northeast at 35 miles per hour. This storm will be near Defiance at 6:25 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Yeah. That is right now. Well, let's uh, let's um, cut away from the, from this just for, uh, from the uh, imagery. And I don't know if anyone could pull up the radar and anything else related to the current tornado scene. Let's talk about that yes. for a little while. Um, other locations so impacted by this thunderstorm that would probably be underneath the severe thunderstorm warning would include Brunersburg, Stanley. Ridgeville Corners, The Bend, Jewel, Knee, and Evansport, Indiana. Oh, Evans. Okay. So that is a definite significant threat. And there is another particularly dangerous situation tornado warning in effect for East Central Adams County and Southwestern Van Wert County. And there is also a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado this one's located near Monroe or near Decatur moving northeast at 30 miles per hour and locations impacted will include Middlebury, Wilshire, Wren, Pleasant Mills, Glenmore, Shum, Ab Abenaka, Dole and Rivar. Um, and whilst all this is going on uh, Indianapolis is under a uh, flood 
advisory or flood warning, one of the two. Similar yes, colors. Uh, the areas just to the north of Indianapolis are underneath the tornado warning, as far as I know, or at least were. I don't know if that's still ongoing or not. East, southeast. Moved off to the southeast. That, that, that cell that you can see on the screen there, that's a tornado warning. Looks, well. like a, looks like a definite tornado about to hit the Manila area. Yeah. So Manila and Homer look like to be the biggest threats. Further down the line, New Salem and maybe the Alpine and Laurel areas. Uh, and What's yeah. up with all the tornadoes lately? I mean, I just we just had a tornado up here in Massachusetts uh, a couple weeks, a couple days ago. We had an F1, EF1 in Concord, which is literally just 20 mile, 10, 15 miles away from where I live. So, I uh, wonder why we have this late summer resurgence in tornadoes. Yeah, and a new severe thunderstorm warning for this cell uh, that's moving towards the east should affect the areas of Buena Vista, Omberg, and Peppertown. Okay, can I cut in? I just cited that it's, uh, it's been reported that uh, tw uh, nearly 20 reports of tornadoes across Indiana into Iho Iho uh, Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> so, yeah, this afternoon, outbreak continues. So uh, they're reporting uh, it's been yeah. reported 20, right 20 tornadoes so far. Yeah, that's what uh, we've been we, discussing we the past, a, uh, a couple of minutes. Um, so other storms so yeah the one near the Miami and wow Clay Burlington Carrollton Erie Peru Rich Valley uh, and eventually the Wabash area or Wabash can you uh, Hank if you could go to the one that is in Van Wert County in Northwest Ohio that's the one with the PDS on it. Yep, defiance. the one year defiance there. Uh, that is. Yes, kind of wedge this tornado? is something that uh, there is a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado uh, with this cell located seven miles west of Ohio City or nine miles east of Decatur. I'm pretty sure you that you're on the right one there. Can't really see the screen share clearly. Um, so would it be Decatur? Oh, this one. Oh, this one. Okay, so you're one to the north. Yeah. All right. So that cell... This one is moving to the northeast at 25 miles per hour. This is a particularly dangerous situation. This is not something to mess around with. Uh, the tornado will be near Ohio City at 635, Convoy at around 640, and Van Wert at around 650. So, Ohio City, you have about seven minutes, May, uh, and you want to give yourself ample time to... Uh, get prepared and get down to your shelter so I would get there now. Convoy you have about 11 minutes and Van Wert has about 21 minutes. Um, some other storm, some other locations that